Here is a Sony model SVP9020 Super VHS player. This is a professional editing deck and there was a matching recorder, the model SVO9620, that had all these frustrating blank spaces in the front, filled out with various recording-related features and functions. Now, when I got this Super VHS player, it worked. The only thing that I could not get to work was the hi-fi audio. But then when I plugged it in for the second time, it blew the internal mains fuse. Here is the power supply, and this is where the fault must be. I have narrowed it down to this. Now, here is where it's getting a little unusual. You can think of this like the power supply for a laptop. The laptop always comes with a power supply, but that power supply is not always made by the manufacturer of the laptop. And if something goes wrong with the power supply, the laptop manufacturer will commonly tell you, we don't fix these things, just get a new one. And that's kind of the thing with this power supply brick. Uh, if I turn this around, you can see this is not made by Sony. This is made by Nichicon. Little spoiler, if you now expect top-notch capacitors in here, you are wrong. And this power supply, if you look into the service manual for the... Well, I wasn't able to find it for the VHS player, but for the recorder, this is just shown as a box. You get the pin out for these connectors, so you know what voltages are supposed to go in and supposed to come out, but the circuit inside is completely unknown. So that doesn't make things any easier. So I had to take apart the power supply and take a close look at the circuit board and I traced out this really crude schematic. But this is giving me kind of an overview of what is what. So the mains comes in over here, goes through quite a lot of mains filtering, which on this board is in this area. And interestingly, Part of this circuit is repeated outside in the VCR, so not even the Sony engineers knew exactly what kind of a power supply they were going to get. Now, we then continue into the rectifier bridge, which is right here, and then it gets interesting. There is a fusible resistor down here, and this was blown. This is a little 3.3 uh, ohm resistor, and it was open. So we know whatever causes the fuse to blow must be somewhere in here, past this fusible resistor, past the rectifier bridge. So everything in here is fine. Now, the fusible resistor on the board is supposed to be right there, but for my testing I replaced it with a wire bridge because uh, I didn't feel like blowing up one resistor after the other. Now, uh, then comes the filter capacitor, and I had this out of the circuit. Now, these filter capacitors rarely fail, and this one is fine. This is actually the only capacitor in this circuit that is fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you measure across the filter capacitor, you get, well, when I measured previously, I got 5 ohms. I just repeated my measurement across this capacitor. I got only 3.5 ohms now. And this is the same with the capacitor in circuit and out of circuit, so it's it's not because of the capacitor. So I then went on to looking what does the positive from the filter capacitor connect to. And it connects to this transformer. It connects to a couple of resistors, total resistance 25 kilo ohms. It uh, connects to this resistor bridged by a capacitor 120 kilo ohms. 
that tells me that uh, the three and a half ohms of resistance must be because of something that connects past this transformer. Because these resistors are all fine, and where else do you want the circuit to go? So uh, the output of this transformer, the, uh, the primary winding, connects to over here. And this is a little IC. It's the MA2830. And this is quite the disaster. The data sheet is not at all helpful. It tells you it's a switching regulator. Well, that's kind of obvious. What else would you expect inside a switch mode power supply? It gives you a bunch of maximum ratings and some performance uh, curves, some electrical characteristics. And it gives you this test circuit. Yeah. What do you want to tell from that? You can't really tell anything from that, can't you? Especially because it doesn't even tell you what you're supposed to test with this test circuit. There is no recommended application, so I would say this, uh, this really is kind of a mystery integrated circuit. But it is connecting right there to the transformer, and with these resistors being fine, the three and a half ohms of resistance must be because of that chip. So this chip is definitely part of the problem. But this chip does not just randomly go bad. There must be a reason, and I have already given you a couple of spoilers. Yeah, I'm suspecting the reason why that chip blew up are bad capacitors. In fact, these two ones. Now, the ones that you see right now are not guilty. I already replaced them in trying to get this power supply to work that way, unsuccessfully. But the original capacitors had leaked so bad, you can actually see on this copper heatsink this black stuff. Before I tried to clean it, it was more like a green stuff. So that was the electrolyte corroding this copper heatsink. So things got pretty bad. And also all the other capacitors that remain now, this little one and these uh, secondary side filter capacitors, they're all bad. Uh, and this, uh, this power supply actually does smell quite badly of rotten fish. So, you know, there are leaky capacitors. So what I'm expecting is the two bad capacitors around here caused a hiccup in the circuitry that drives this IC, and that caused the IC to blow up. So let's once again measure resistance across the main filter capacitor. Yeah, as I said, three and a half ohms. I now have the MA2830 removed from the circuit, so let's see if that has cleared the short circuit. Let's repeat the resistance measurement across the filter capacitor. And it's now, oh, as you can see, the resistance is rising. It's now in the mega ohms range. So the short circuit is gone. Now, of course, it's very well possible that the MA2830 is not the only component that's bad. So I continued my investigations. Now, uh, through this transformer, and then down here, you can see it printed onto the board. That's the dividing line between the secondary and the primary. Now, I don't think a problem on the secondary side could potentially cause the primary side to blow. They are coupled through this uh, optocoupler down there. But yeah, that would be kind of a stupid design. So I really only checked the primary side checked various diodes on here. Those are fine. I had already checked a lot of the resistors. They are all fine. I've now also unsoldered these two transistors. And let's go and check those right now and see what they are doing. 
So we have a 2SC1815. That should be an NPN transistor, and it is. So that's fine. Let's check the other one. This is a 2SA1015. And it's a PNP transistor. That's what it should be. So the two transistors are fine and can go back into the circuit. As I've already said, the MA2830 going by the data sheet is a bit of a mystery component and indeed it's not readily available at your preferred electronics components dealer, but you can find it. And I was able to find a replacement for this on eBay. Now, I don't like ordering electronics components off eBay, and this is going to prove my point. Now, the price was acceptable, but the device shipped from Italy, and it took a long time to arrive. In fact, two weeks, because they first shipped it from Italy to the Netherlands, and then from the Netherlands to me in Germany. And this is what finally arrived and now you may say well wait a minute this thing looks like it has been through hell and back and yeah if we turn this around you can see there is remains of heatsink compound in there it's all scratched up this is a used component that they pulled out of something now i don't mind that for as long as this works the new MA2830 has been installed on the board and in addition to that I've also replaced this small capacitor here. I'm not going to replace the secondary side filter capacitors until I have confirmed that the power supply is working because if it isn't working that would be a waste. But let's repeat our resistance measurement across the filter capacitor and see if that has changed now that we have the new MA2830 in place. And it hasn't. Resistance keeps rising. That's, of course, an effect of the filter capacitor. We're in the mega ohms range. That's how it's supposed to be. The power supply has been put back together and temporarily installed in the VCR and I think I'm feeling confident so I'm not going to film the back of the unit where I could see the fuse go pop. Instead I'm going to film the front of the unit where I can see it work. I got power applied to the unit so let's press the power switch and see what happens. Wish me luck. Let's put in a VHS cassette, see if that works. It works! It works! Let's press eject. Get out the cassette. I'm going to turn this off. And now... I can replace the secondary side filter capacitors. Notice how the circuit board looks wet in the places of the old secondary side filter capacitors. Yep, that's all electrolyte that has leaked out of those capacitors. They're all Nichicon and they are all bad. So I'll now clean up the board with isopropyl alcohol, get rid of the electrolyte, and there they are, the new secondary side filter capacitors are installed. They're all 105 degrees Celsius rated capacitors, like the originals. But on some of these I was actually able to bump up the voltage rating from 10 volts to 16 volts. So that should give them a little more headroom. The power brick has been reassembled. It's ready to go back into the video player. And just for fun, let's take a look at uh, some of those capacitors, some of those original 
secondary side filter capacitors. This one is a 680 microfarad. It's quite leaky, so let's see what this shows up as. Well, that's that's not too bad. That's okay, actually, except it's leaking, so it's not okay. Let's try another 680 microfarad. Well, that's okay, too, despite being leaky. And finally, let's try this big 7400 microfarad capacitor. That's also quite leaky. And again, it's fine. Well, despite being leaky. And here is the Sony SVP9020 with repaired power supply playing back a Super VHS video cassette. And it is outputting quite a good picture, as you can see. Though this might require some further experimentation. I tried various different cassettes and so far I found out that uh, this is really quite important, the tracking adjustment. See, this is one of the shortcomings of this video player, that it doesn't have auto-tracking. And then what definitely is a problem is I still can't get the hi-fi audio to work. There is just silence. So this is going to require some more work, but we'll do that in another video. Thank you for watching.